In Creo Parametric, you can use the Revolve tool to create a primary wall in a sheet metal part, but there are a couple considerations that you want to take into account. To create your revolved wall, you will go to the Walls Overflow menu. Here is the command. When I click on it, it opens up the dashboard, and we need to define our sketch. For some reason, I use internal sketches for my sheet metal walls. Let's click on the datum plane called Front. This puts me in sketch mode, and I recommend that you put in your center line for your axis of revolution first. Here's why. Let's say I just create my geometry. I will create a line. Let's make a vertical line here, and I get a dimension. This dimension corresponds to the radius of the revolve feature, but I'm probably going to want a diameter dimension. Let's use the undo button, and I will create my center line. I'm using the center line command from the datum group, not from the sketch group. When you use the center line command from the datum group, that's when you'll automatically get a diameter dimension by default. I will use my right mouse button to get to the line tool, and I will sketch a vertical line once more. And here you can see that we have our diameter dimension. And let me plug in a number, let's use 200, that's good. And then for this dimension, let's change that to 300. I am ready to get out of sketch mode. You can get to the check mark also from your right mouse button menu. And here we can see a preview of the revolve feature that would be created. And right now it is by default suggesting 360 degrees. You can double click on the dimension to change it. You also have a drop down list with previously used values. Let's use a value of 180 and I'm going to flip the direction and then hit the check mark. So a part like this can easily be unbent. I will turn off my datums to unclutter the screen and then we can use the flat pattern preview in the in graphics toolbar and there you can see a preview of the flattened version. No problem. We would expect that to be able to be flattened. But let's go back to our feature and then edit definition. I'm going to change the value to 360 degrees and hit the check mark. Now when I go to the flat pattern preview, we are getting an error. The preview is not available. The model has surfaces that cannot be unbent because we have no rips here in the model. Let me move this aside and close my flat pattern preview. So what some people do in the situation is that they'll use maybe an angle of like 359.9 so that it is not fully closed. Let me hit the middle mouse button in order to create it. You can see that we have a small edge here in the model. And if I were to go to the flat pattern preview, yes, it's able to be unbent. But Again, it's not exactly what we, what we want. We want 360 degrees, not 359.9 degrees. Some people object to that. So let's go back and change this. Let's go edit it and change it to our actual value that we want, 360 degrees. Oh yeah, and by the way, the reason that people might not want that 359.9 degrees instead is because they're not going to get the exact flattened size that they want the blank to be. So let's hit the check mark. And what we can do in this case is that we can put a rip into the model. In this case, I'll go to the drop down and choose a sketched rip. Let me turn on my datum plane display once more. And I will define my sketch on the datum plane called front. And let's go to our sketch references. I always like to add in the top of the model here. So that way when I sketch my line, I can easily just snap into both of the necessary references. Now let's use the right mouse button to get to the check mark once more. And I want the cut going on sort of like the front surface of the model. So I just flip the direction. You also have the ability to flip which is considered the like fixed side or the uh, rip side, whatever. Let's hit the check mark in order to create that. Let me once again turn off my datum plane display and then go to the flat pattern preview from the in graphics toolbar. And lo and behold, this can be flattened. 
One thing that you also want to take into consideration is that you want to make sure that your sketch does not create undevelopable geometry. In other words, stuff that can't be flattened. So for example, let me go to the original revolve wall and then let's edit the internal sketch. I'm going to add in another additional line, but I'm going to add in a line at an angle that will cause this not to be developable. And so let me go to the dimension. Let's change this to 120 and let's put in a dimension for the overall height from here to here and then middle mouse button. And I'm going to choose that to be a value of, let's use 450. And then I will hit the check mark and our feature updates in the graphics area. Let's hit the check mark. If I bring back my navigator to get to my model tree, I can see that the rip feature actually failed. Let's edit definition of the rip and hit the edit button to get into sketch mode. One of the surfaces here is giving us a problem. Let's remove that surface. And then instead I'm gonna add into my list of sketch references. Let me just grab the edge there and close then I can use my coincident constraint to make the vertex coincident with my reference. Hit the check mark and our sketch works again. But if I go to the flat pattern preview, first it wants to know, hey, what do I want to use as my fixed geometry? Let me select an edge in the model and then click the OK button. And the preview is not available. Yeah, that, this cannot be flattened as it is. So you want to think about that when you are creating your geometry for your revolve feature. So even though you can create the revolve, hey, you might not be able to flatten it.